It's Christmas Eve 2020, a very special night. It's the night Christ was born. Come in with me and hear the story we love and all the music of Christmas.
Welcome everyone and Merry Christmas to you and yours. We're so glad that you've joined us this evening for our online Christmas Eve service. Wherever you are in the world, just remember that you hold a part of the Christ light and we are all one in that newborn light tonight. Thank you to those who in Markdale here made special luminaries for our service here tonight. We have lots of special music for you as well and lots of carol singing too. Thank you to our singers, Connie Vilniakainen, Laura Wilson, Justin Vilniakainen, and Mary Muir, Jane Irwin, and Barbara Hutton. Thank you all very much. We hope that you remembered we're having communion here tonight with, as part of our service. And if you are not quite ready for that, just press the pause button on your video and go and get some bread and juice if you're planning to join us for that a little later. Christmas is a time for family and friends to gather, but it always brings a pang of sadness to those who are isolated and alone. Because of COVID this year, that isolation seems much more acute for some. So please make tomorrow a time to call a lonely neighbor if you can. That call will mean the world to them. And as this is my last service as your supply minister, I want to wish the congregation at Ansley United Church all the best in their continued search for a permanent minister. And I wish you joy as you move forward past this pandemic, hopefully sometime in the not too distant future. It's time now for our call to worship. And in that, I would like to introduce Grace Denhan, who will be lighting our Christ candle for us. Tonight, we remember the birth of Jesus Christ. His light lives in us and illuminates our lives. The gifts of his light and his love fill our hearts with joy. And with Christ in our hearts, surely we can bear the pain and despair of this year gone by. The light has always been there inside us but sometimes it burns low. Sometimes it feels as if it might just go out when times are tough. But tonight, we remember God's light fills our darkness with hope. God's light fills our emptiness with love. God's light fills fear with kindness and assurance. God's light fills our lives with courage and with joy. And Grace, you can go ahead and light the candle now. God's light emerges from the dawn of creation and moves through us and from us out into the world. So we join tonight with people all over the world celebrating the birth of this great light, Jesus Christ, the light of the world. And now our hymn is Away in a Manger. It's number 69 in Voices United.
Shall we join together in prayer? Let us pray. Gracious God of light and love, fill all the spaces around us tonight with your divine presence. Even as we are not able to be together, let your love fill all the space between us and make of us a truly connected community. Fill all the darkness with your divine presence. Fill all our minds with your divine presence. Fill all our hearts with your divine presence. Fill all our homes with your divine presence. O oh God, may your divine presence shine on the world tonight and bring peace out of trouble, joy out of sadness, hope out of fear, and wonder out of doubt. We pray in the midst of your divine presence. Amen. A poem in the bleak midwinter. In the bleak midwinter, frosty wind made moan. Earth stood hard as iron, water like a stone. Snow had fallen, snow on snow, snow on snow. In the bleak midwinter, long ago. Our God, heaven cannot hold him, nor earth sustain. Heaven and earth shall flee away when he comes to reign. In the bleak midwinter, a stable place sufficed for the Lord God Almighty, Jesus Christ. Enough for him whom cherubim worship night and day, a breast full of milk, a manger full of hay. Enough for him whom angels fall before, the ox and ass and camel which adore. Angels and archangels may have gathered there, cherubim and seraphim thronged the air. But his mother, only in her maiden bliss, worshipped the beloved with a kiss. What shall I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what I can, I give him. Give him my heart.
shall fail the right prevail long time ago in the olden days, people did not have cars or buses or airplanes to get around. Most people walked. They liked to walk at night because it was cooler then and it was easier to follow the stars in the sky. It was on just such a night that the baby Jesus was born. His mom and dad Mary and Joseph were on their way to a town called Bethlehem. It was Joseph's hometown and he was required to go there to pay taxes. It's a long journey at night on foot. But Mary was nine months pregnant and she was just about to give birth to that baby and she traveled all the way, sitting on a donkey. It was late, and then Mary said to Joseph, the baby is coming, I can feel it, I can't stop it. So Joseph found a small hotel, which was full. And the manager of the inn said they could use the stable at the back. It would be warm, and there would be plenty of straw for when the baby was born. The stable had animals. There was a donkey, there was a cow, a goat, a mountain goat. And before you know it, the baby had come, and somehow Joseph knew what to do. They wrapped the baby in some cloths, and he gave Jesus to Mary to nurse. And after a bit, when the baby was fed, she laid him down in the manger. A manger is what is used to feed the animals. Now, a little ways away, not far, an angel appeared in the sky. She was shimmering with light, and it was like the whole night had come alive. And there were shepherds out in the field with their sheep. And they saw this great light. And just when they saw the angel, it was as if a whole choir of angels erupted in song 
and the night air was full of light and joy. The shepherds were afraid. It was so very strange. The angel told them that there would be peace on earth now. They said that a babe had been born in Bethlehem and that the birth of this babe would bring light to the hearts of all people everywhere. So the shepherds decided to go to Bethlehem and soon they found the stable for it was shimmering with light. Moses put his sheep over beside the shepherd. Mary began to wonder what was happening. This night was becoming stranger by the minute, yet she felt that there was something truly wonderful happening. She felt it in her heart, a feeling she would never forget. And when they got home to Nazareth, a few moons later, there was a knock at the door of their little house. And outside the door, there was a whole caravan of kings and queens and wise men and wise women who had traveled from the far east. They had seen the star in the sky the night of Jesus' birth and knew that something remarkable was happening there. They also liked to travel at night. When they arrived at the place where Jesus lay, they gave him gifts. They gave him expensive gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. These are very expensive spices. These were the kind of gifts you would give to a king. How could a baby born to such a poor family in such a small place become a king? Well, my friends, that's a story for another day. But now on Christmas night, let us remember the time when Jesus was born because his love is still with us. His love is inside of us. And this love comes back to life when we celebrate in his name, and especially when we live our lives the way he lived his life. With his light in us, we can keep traveling and our journey will be full of hope and peace and joy and love. Thank you.
That was so beautiful. Thank you to Elaine Mitchell from the Georgian Bay Symphony and uh, David Fries for that beautiful duet. So thank you very much. Can you imagine sailing by ship from England to Australia at a time when there was no GPS, no satellite, no internet, just open water, hugging the coastline all the way down Africa and then navigating with the stars as you cross across the huge expanse of the Indian Ocean. Back in the 1700s, they were sending prisoners there in order to claim the country and build their houses and their businesses. The ships would be loaded down with supplies along with their crew and of course their unruly passengers. It would not be a journey most would choose, six to eight weeks or so. Thinking about those voyages reminds me of the journey that we've had this year with COVID. We've sought to follow the advice of our captains, though some would prefer mutiny to following orders if they could. And as we've navigated the fear and anxiety of this year, it's almost like we're following a coastline through the dark, looking for the next star to light our way. We've been in rough waters, and the chop of the ocean has thrown us off balance. And I don't know about you, but for me, a lot large part of this year has been just trying to find my balance. And every time the seas change, I have to navigate that balance again in my life. We've left behind some of our loved ones. They've not been able to make the journey with us. We've left behind our creature comforts and all the things which normally bring us joy. We've left behind the way we normally celebrate Christmas, even. We're traveling together, though, and now we are heading into the inky, dark waters of the future ahead with just a few pinpricks, or should I say, vaccination shots of light to suggest that there is an end in sight. Oh, so soon, we hope. I love to sail. I love to sail the open sea, but even I know that I would not have loved that long journey toward Australia. There are precious, precious few islands along the way. Nowhere in that time would you jump off the boat and touch land. So it is that along that whole southern coast of Australia, there were light stations built to guide the ships to port. At one point, there were more than 50 of them along that shore. They were called beacons of hope. Early on, they were built of wood. And at night, the convicts would be forced to go up on top of them and build fires so as to provide notice to the ships in the water. And even then, hundreds of ships did not make the journey all the way. Later, of course, technology would evolve and lighthouses would be built with refracted light to guide the way. And it's the light of Christmas that we still need to guide our way. Our world is hurting more this year than other years. We shudder at the number of people who have died. We know that in this country of wealth and wisdom, we let down our guard when it came to those in our long-term care homes. We each daily still strive to find the balance in our own situations, navigating all the changing rules and suggestions, placing them upside our own needs and our desires. Frankly, we're all a little seasick from this journey. But the light of Christmas burns still. 
And when we recall the story and when we remember about the birth of love inside a tiny little cave, in the strangest of circumstances and to the poorest of people, that little light is still the same light that shines for us like a pilot light on a gas furnace, just a little push, and it comes back and fills us up again. Our hearts and souls, so weary this year, turned on again. We know we can see the light on the coastlines of our lives, and we know that this light will guide us home to safe harbor, to security, and to peace. So my friends, if you let this light live in you, this divine spark, this bit of cosmic light inside your flesh, I guarantee you that it will fill your heart with power. And that power is a superpower unlike any other power on earth. It's stronger than fear. It's stronger than anxiety stronger than our pain. It's stronger than violence or hurt or hate. This light, born tonight, still burns in the heart of humanity. And with it, we can launch our ships into open water and still be guided with courage and strength wherever we are called to go. Carry it with you on the journey ahead and it will guide you and maybe even change your life. Many blessings to you now and always. Amen. And now our hymn is number 64 in Voices United, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Well, it's Christmas Eve, and it's time for us to share communion together. It is an honor and a pleasure for me to be able to be here with you tonight. 
And we're going to begin with the ancient words of the Sursum Corda. God be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give God thanks and praise. It is right to give God thanks and praise. In these cold, dark nights of this COVID year, when everything is upside down and backwards, a light still shines in the darkness. The birth of Christ cannot be stopped. The gifts of God in the birth of Christ cannot be resisted. There is no power or superpower on earth strong enough to keep God's love from bursting forth in the dark and cold of this COVID winter. We are not together, it's true, but we are not apart either, for we are all part of the body of Christ. We who gather here, whether near or far, we hold one another in the light of Christ. We hold our world in the light of Christ. And even though there are many sorrows and many living in despair, yet we know that all of us are being held. We are held in a love that is far greater than any love humans can imagine. Christ was born of humble means. His was not a noble birth. He did not have riches. Her parents, his parents were ordinary people, more poor than most. He was born a weak child in the cold and dark of night. There was no room for him. He was born outside in a manger. Yet he is our light. His love for us still shines. His ethic of peace and kindness still lives. His community of those who live with his love and for his love is still very much alive. We are the people of Christ's love. That love is born again into our hearts where it will give us courage and hope for the living of these days, a time unlike any other in our lives. So it is we do what Jesus did with his disciples. He took the bread, and broke the bread, and giving thanks to God, he said, this is my body broken for you. He took the cup and pouring the wine into the cup, he said, my love is poured out for you as a blessing for you and for the whole world. As we bring our hearts and minds to this time and to this place, let's bring our voices together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now in your own homes, it's time for you to break the bread and share the wine or juice with one another. And while we do that, uh, we're going to hear a beautiful rendition of O Holy Night.
Thank you very much, Connie and Leora and David. Now we're going to sing our final hymn, which is Silent Night. It's number 67 in Voices United. And uh, at the end of the hymn, one verse will be uh, just hummed. And uh, so please sing along, everyone.
Thank you so much for joining us tonight and for celebrating Christmas Eve with us here at Ansley United Church. And thank you to any and all who have helped us in our service uh, tonight. I'd especially like to thank all of those who helped in our tableau earlier on in the service. And a special thanks goes to our production team of Tim Riley, David Tonks, and Carol Worden, with uh, a special shout out to our organist, David Fries, for uh, putting all the musical pieces together for tonight. So thanks to one and all for everything uh, that went into putting this service together tonight. Friends, let us go in peace. Let us carry the light. Let us spread the love. And may we go with the blessing of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. And now we'll finish with David's postlude.